If you're thinking of trying wild swimming or open water swimming and you need a little advice before you start, then this video is for you. I make adventure cycling and adventure swimming videos, mainly in the Scottish Highlands, where I also help organize charity swim events. If that sounds interesting, please click subscribe. I already posted a video about starting to swim in cold water, and it's still up to date. But as the sea and the lakes warm up, more people are tempted to try wild swimming. This video gives seven great tips to start open water swimming. You don't have to wear a wetsuit, but many people choose to because it adds warmth and it also makes them more efficient through the water by adding buoyancy. It raises the hips and the legs and it makes a reasonable swimmer like me an awful lot more efficient. People also ask for what's the warmest wetsuit. Well, the Blue 70 thermal range does have a thermal liner and that adds a couple of degrees, I think, to, to the swimming temperature. Um, but really the warmest wetsuit is the one which fits your body shape the tightest. And we all vary, so you have to try on a lot to, to see which fits you best. Look for gaps in the small of the back in the crotch area where cold water can pool because that will chill you down. More expensive wetsuits have more panels and so are more likely to fit tighter if they're the right shape for you. Most wetsuits are made of 5mm neoprene on the legs and on the body where you need the flotation and the rest on the shoulders are, is very thin so always wear old thin gloves. People don't do this, but always put them on because otherwise you're, it's not your nails, it's just your fingers can, can rip the neoprene as you're trying to pull it up your shoulder. You get these half moon tears and they are a pain to fix. And on time they can stretch into even bigger holes. So you gradually work it up your arm until it's on your shoulder, but now that looks like it might be on, but it's not, because here, if I come in closer, here there's like a chicken wing of fabric. And even if it's a little one, that will pull your shoulder down and it'll interfere with your stroke. So, start again at the bottom, pull it right up, top and bottom, really get plenty of spare almost on the top. You can see how long this does take and eliminate that chicken wing and it should even feel a bit too high on your shoulder and nice and tight and there's nowhere for cold water to pool. Now this looks like it's on tight but if I go down to the crotch look how much neoprene I can pull and gather all this work it up towards my neck so it frees up my shoulders there's less space for water to pool and it makes it less likely that my neck will chafe. You probably know the zip puller goes on top of the flap, but if you Velcro it flat, then when your head is back, when you're sighting, it can chafe your neck. So fold it down a bit when you fasten the Velcro. I always use earplugs. They stop me feeling seasick. I'm wearing gloves because there are quite a few stinging jellyfish around here. And so I have boots for the same reason. The bright cap helps with visibility. The reason we are advised not to simply jump in the water is because we are mammals, warm-blooded creatures, and that cold water gives us a cold shock response and it can make you <gasps> gasp. And if you're under the water when you do that, well, that's not a very good situation to be in, so, so you need to acclimatize gradually. And one way, which I forgot on the last video, is to get some warm water, not hot, just warm water out the tap at home, put it down the front, of your wetsuit because this is a wetsuit and the warm water will not only keep you a little warmer it'll help make the wetsuit stick to your body and so it'll be tighter to you again leaving less gaps for that awful cold water to seep in and chill you down then splash some water on your face let your body know what's coming this really does seem to prepare it and kind of submerge gradually. You can feel the water seeking in, seeking out the nooks and crannies, I should say. 
but it's not too bad. When I first came into this lock quite a few years ago now at this very point, at this time of the year, I couldn't breathe. It felt, it felt so cold. It felt like it was biting into my chest and I just couldn't get my breath. But then I found that as long as I could stay in, even if it was just doing breaststroke for about six minutes, then the blood would come back from the capillaries and into the core. And actually I felt okay. And the more I did it, the more my body kind of felt, you know, oh, we're doing this again. Right, fair enough. So the moral of that is don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged if your first time is, oh, this is just way too cold for me. If you persevere, your body will do the same. It'll go, right, this is what we do. No problem. Think twice about swimming immediately after heavy rain. All sorts of nasty stuff can run off fields, septic tanks, and sewage plants. Here in the Highlands, cold rainwater runs from the mountains and puts a cold layer on the loch, so you might prefer to start away from where streams and rivers enter. Don't spend too long in the water for the first few times. It's less about swimming and more about getting your body acclimatized to the water. And try and pick a sunny day because having the air temperature higher than the water temperature makes it a lot easier to warm up afterwards. In winter, I rush to the car and put on the heater. Now, using a bag that doubles as a changing mat, I get out of my wetsuit at the shore. A warm drink, a, a hat and some, some warm clothes are always good for after a swim. And the one thing you will hear time and again is never swim alone. And that is especially true when you are starting out or when you are visiting a new area. But I think it's worth acknowledging that some people do swim alone and derive a positive pleasure from that independence. That is not a recommendation. You'll notice I'm towing a float bag and inside is a personal locator beacon, satellite device, with which I could call for help. If you disagree with anything I've said in here, then rather than giving a thumbs down, share your, share your knowledge, add something in the comments, something positive that others can learn from. And if you want to get local advice, because what I'm saying applies to here on the west coast of Scotland, a fairly sheltered sea lock, and conditions may be different where you are, then for all its faults, Facebook is a great way of getting in touch with other swimmers. So check out my channel if you found this helpful and perhaps you'd give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. There are more swimming videos in there too. Until next time, goodbye.